There's something incredibly special about a story that brings history to life in a way that feels close to home. When We Were Colored, a mother's story captures the bittersweet nostalgia of the Jim Crow South while shining a light on the strength, love, and resilience within black families. Here to tell us about the book turned play and its revival here in Sacramento are the playwright Ginger Rutland, as well as the author's granddaughter, we have Eva Schwartz. Hello, thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. All right, so a lot to unpack here. Ginger, I wanted to start with you. What inspired you to adapt your mother, Eva Rutland's story, into this play for the Sacramento stage? You know, I saw a lot of theater, because um, mm -hmm. I'm a theater fan, and most theater about Black people were sad, you know, bad things happened to us. We, you know, were drugs or violence or this, that, and the other. And my mother wrote a story mm -hmm. about her life. And it was the life of a swath of black America that you don't often hear about. Mm -hmm. It's about the middle class blacks who do, or <laughs> sort of just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. They, you know, go to school, they send their kids to school, they pay their taxes. They're just like everyone else. And my mother's life, was a happy life and sh I wanted to tell that black story. It is not the black story, but it is a story that I think doesn't get enough attention. Yeah, and Eva, I mean, you're named after your grandmother. I am named after grandma. I want the book to be a, um, I want someone to adapt it into a musical. Uh -huh. I want it to be the happy version of The Color Purple. Mm -hmm. That's great, I just would like a little happier. Um, I like, but I like the book because it just, it tells the story of, for me, just being a mom. Mm. Like I watched that and go, when grandma describes being so tired of joining everything, mm -hmm. PTA president, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, and I'm going, it's not how much energy it is for the kids, it's for me. Yeah. And I'm like, I recognize that mm -hmm. as a mom myself. <laughs> And it's important to tell those stories. So Ginger, I mean, tell us more about your mom, about Eva Rutland, um, and what made her story so unique. My mother was born in 1917. Mm. She was born in the segregated South. She grew up in the segregated South. Her father was a pharmacist, her mother was a school teacher. So she was in Atlanta and she was part of the sort of the black elite of Atlanta. She went to Spelman College. Then when she got married during World War II, her husband, who worked for the United States Army Air Corps at, during the war, but later for the United States Air Force, he got transferred to California, and she was terrified. She was terrified because she'd grown up in the segregated world in which people were kind and protective of her. She was coming to California in an integrated world, and she was worried that those white people would not be kind to her children. Mm -hmm. That's when she started writing stories. So tell us about that move. I mean, what was it like for your parents to move from the South to California, like you mentioned, and how did it shape their journey along the way? Well, it was 1952 when we came to um, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. I was four years old. I had a twin sister, also four, and an older brother and an older sister. And for the first time, we were coming in what was supposed to be an integrated world, but at that time, there were all kinds of restrictions. For example, you couldn't buy a home anywhere you went. You had to buy a home in in neighborhoods that were not redlined, mm -hmm. in neighborhoods mm -hmm. that uh, allowed black people to buy homes. Uh, we went to the, but unlike my mother, we went to integrated schools. We went to schools with whites and Chinese and Japanese and, we had an integrated life, so it was different from them, and my mother joined everything. She was the PTA president, she was the <laughs> Boy Scout leader, she was the Boy Scout leader, mm -hmm. the Girl Scout leader, because she wanted to protect her children, yeah. and she thought by joining, mm -hmm. she'd be able to do that. What I find interesting, on the, um, because of segregation, Grandpa was unable to buy a house next to his job at the McClellan Air Force Base in Rancho Cordova, in the brand new subdivisions. Mm -hmm. And instead, they were forced to buy in Curtis Park, mm -hmm. <laughs> which is a much older, beautiful trees, mm -hmm. as opposed. And actually, even that area now is having water issues because it's contaminated. And uh, I just you mean Rancho Cordova. That, the area, uh, Rancho Cordova, the area next to McClellan. Mm -hmm. Some people complain that, like, it's you know some of the stuff from the. Air and I'm like, that was kind of where we lucked out a little. Yeah. Yes, right. segregation at that time. Housing segregation helped us. 